For board games, I'm I wanted to have this segment here today, Devin. We're gonna do this really fast, but I thought it would be kind of fun. Um and I need some like help from anyone listening or that sees this video on YouTube. I uh I need a way to ensure that I play more of the games I get. I don't know if it might just be that I need more sheer will and determination. Um, but I just wanted to list, these are all of the games that I um, either got recently or are delivering very soon that I haven't played yet. And so I'm kind of like paralyzed for choice at the moment. And I don't know like what order should I play them in? And I'm like in my own head a little bit. I have too many that I'm excited about. So I'm not excited about any of them. I don't know. It's driving me nuts, but um, so we're going to go through these really fast, Devin, because there's like 30. <laughs> and so we're obviously not going to spend very much time on them. But um, first up, in a package delivering tomorrow, I'm very pumped for this one. Uh, this is one of the hottest games in the world right now. It's The Lord of the Rings Duel for Middle Earth. This is kind of a reskin of Seven Wonders Duel. It's a card game where one player plays as uh, kind of the fellowship and one person plays as the agents of Sauron, I believe. And you're basically taking cards from this pyramid and the cards that you take, let you do certain things. And eventually the black rider can catch up to Frodo. And if he does, then that player wins or Frodo can make it to Mount doom. And if he does, then that player wins. So there's like three different win conditions and you're all fighting over the three and you can't let the other player get too far ahead in any of them. Very pumped for that one, Devin. We're going to play. It's going to be fun. Um, in that same package tomorrow, there's three other games coming. One is Harmonies. This was a very popular game a few months ago. You're trying to build this cool little uh, kind of grid of different types of land to get these animals to come stay in your habitat. It's kind of an abstract game in that way. You're taking these pieces kind of in Azul style from the center board and putting them on your board to get animal cards. Very cute, colorful artwork. Um, next is Through the Desert, designed by the good doctor, Reiner Knizia. <laughs> oh, my man. <laughs> he, um, Yeah, this is a kind of an abstract game where you are building routes, I think, with your camels in order to have more control of the desert. It's supposed to be excellent. Again, I haven't played it yet, but coming tomorrow. Um, also got Witchcraft, which is a solo-only card game where I think you're playing as like the leader of this coven of witches and you have to stop these monsters from like taking over the town, but you also can't let the people in the town know too much about your witch power or else they'll uh, burn you at the stake. So it's supposed to be a really fun solo game. I'm excited to play that one. It has cool. This one looks style. cool to me. Yeah, it does look cool. We could even try it like together. solo. that doesn't make sense, but you could play it together in that way. Okay, so those all deliver tomorrow. The next segment of games are all games I got in the last week. Basically, all of these were from the Prime Day sales. In the Because I think Prime Day, for board games, for whatever reason, opened up a little early. Um, so it was like a week ago, and I was ordering these games. So this one is one that was on Devin's most anticipated list from last week. It says, let's go to Japan. I've got it already sleeved, got a 3D insert printed. It's in the box and just waiting to be played. Looks very cool. Has very big cards. Very excited for it. Um, the next couple are pretty simple party games. One's called Medium. You're trying to say the same word as your teammates based on a prompt. Kind of reminds me of like more like interactive code names. Uh, next up is called Just One. It's one of the most famous party games of the last decade where you're trying to get one specific person you're playing with to guess a, a very specific word. Everyone else gives a clue, but if anyone gives the same clue, then both of those clues are discarded. So you have to give a unique clue. It's kind of the shtick. Uh, next is Tiwanaku. This one, I'm pretty pumped for this one too. This is a... Uh, deduction game it has this really cool dial you'll have to find the dial if you can Devin. And basically you're moving your character on this grid trying to uh 
figure out what land type and crop type go in these different areas. And then you'll make a guess at different parts. This is the dial, yeah, here, Devin. And there's those two windows. And so you'll go to a spot and say, I think at this spot is this crop type or this type. And based on the row and the column you're in, you rotate that disc that you've put inside the dial. And then you'll open one of those windows and it will tell you what should be there. Um, so it's a kind of a logic, but like a crossword puzzle made into a board game with this dial that knows all of the answers. Really cool. Wow. But excited to try that one. Uh, Spotlight is a brand new game. This one I got mostly to play with my kids, but it has this cool kind of board where you can't see everything. It has like this dark paper underneath it. But then you put this little flashlight paper underneath it that has a white segment. And so you can see everything in your flashlight segment and you flip over a card. It says to like find as many of these as you can. And everyone has like 30 seconds to find as many as they can. And if you guess the right number, I think you uh, win or you can also play it cooperatively or whatever, but cool little where's Waldo like game there. Uh, next is one called quicksand. This is a cooperative game where you're flipping over sand timers and together you're just trying to make sure none of your sand timers run out. So it'll be my turn. I'll play a card and all the sand timers on a an orange tile will flip and move to the next one. Or then it's Devin's turn. He plays a card with a square on it and all of them on a square um, tile will move. And you win if you can get them all to the end of the track past kind of that finish line thing without any of them running out. So it's supposed to be kind of fun. Uh, Ancient Knowledge, I think you'll love this one, Devin. It's very much a card-based game with a big deck of unique cards. You have your own board. You put the cards on this top section of your board, and then eventually they will slide to the left, but they'll have a bunch of these knowledge tokens on them, and you have to get as many of them off as possible because when they fall off your track, any knowledge that was on them will be a negative point for you at the end of the game. It's supposed to be an excellent card game. Uh, next up, another one I got to play with the kids. This is a <laughs> this is a lot of games here, Devin. Um, is called Dive. You look down through these translucent boards, and you have to make a guess. I'm like, how many levels deep is that shark? And you're like, you have to make sure you don't mess up on the shark and the uh, not a shark side of your discs. Then you can assign more points to ones you're more sure of in order to get a boost from the turtles and stuff. Uh, it's supposed to be a pretty fun you know, push your luck and uh, depth perception game, literally, because it's a stack of like 30 translucent things you're looking through as if you're looking down through the water. Again, kind of a kid's game there. But uh, Next is one called Monumental. Again, this is like a $70 game I got for like $14. Doesn't make any sense. Um, I got the version without miniatures. It's just cardboard. But uh, even so, it has like 300 cards in the game. In this game, you uh, make a grid of nine cards, and then you choose a column and a row from your uh, three by three grid. And you get to activate all five of those cards that are in the column and the row. And then they come out of your grid, and new cards from the top of your deck fill in the grid. So it's a deck building game where you're trying to get new cards into your deck. And then they'll refill your grid and you activate the columns and rows. It's supposed to be fun. <sighs> Next up, the one called Pendulum. This is from Stonemeyer Games, who makes very pretty games. And this is a Euro game that has sand timers in it, which is very unique. And where you can put your workers is based on um, where the sand timers are. And there's three different sections that have like a 45 second or a two minute or a three minute sand timer. So you're trying to be efficient with like where, what actions you're doing and you have to maybe wait for the purple one to be able to flip, but then you need to hurry and do this before the green one comes over. Kind of a weird game that again, yeah, was just on an Uber sale and I've wanted to try it for a while. So there it is. Um, and then two more Iki is a very pretty Japanese style game with this kind of shopping street in a rondelle, which is a board game name for basically a track that goes in a circle and you move along that track 
to the different shops and you'll go around that rondelle many many times in the game it's supposed to be excellent and then uh last in this section is empire's end uh, which is kind of like no thanks but you have a big empire you have to take care of and you don't want any of the sections of your empire to be destroyed by calamity so that was all the games in i got last week freaking prime day and then in the last couple of months i've got probably 20 more here we're just going to read these ones even faster um so that we're not here for too long the main gist of this was just that i'm I'm struggling to know what to play and need, I think, just some advice either from myself and my own mental capacities or from anyone uh, watching the video or listening. How would you uh, tackle this problem? Besides probably you know, to getting David away from the credit card, that would be helpful too. Um, <laughs> anyways, the other games I've gotten in the last couple of months I haven't been able to play yet. Flip 7 is a fun little card game about it's kind of like 21 on your turn you either say hit me or you pass and are out of the round and you can get more points but if you bust then you lose everything nar a very popular game from last year where you were trying to race to 40 points with these cool viking cards uh, making a little stack of them in front of you bomb busters it's a brand new cooperative game where you're trying to defuse a bomb together but uh, you can't see the wires that are in front of the other players. You don't want to cut the yellow and red ones. Uh, Cities, we talked about earlier from Devere. It's a pretty simple uh, drafting game where you're building your own little city in front of you with buildings on top of it. Gizmos is an engine building game. It has this cool marble like station, and marbles come out of this little track out of the front. And so you can, when it's your turn to take a marble, you generally are only able to take them from those like five or six that you can see out the front of the marble randomizer. It's supposed to be a fun engine building game. Uh, Evacuation is from Vladimir Suki, one of my favorite designers. It's a big, complex game. I um, just haven't been able to play that one yet. It's about evacuating all of the people from a dying planet to a new one and kind of restarting life there. It was very popular last year. Uh, Nimalia, a small little card game that's supposed to be a fun little card laying game where you're overlapping cards in order to build like the best little animal, I don't know, uh, habitat. It's supposed to be very fun. Dabawala, kind of a polyomino game, but it has a second phase. Or oh, I missed one, didn't I? Um, I missed a whole bunch. I skipped up like six. <laughs> you skipped like six. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're gonna we'll go back to that while. Uh, Motor City is a a roll and write game where you are, um, I think managing different sections of a like a car manufacturing shop and uh, it's supposed to be great. I like roll and write games. Then we got uh, two Vital Lacerda games, Kanban, which is one about <laughs> kind of a similar theme to Motor City. You are a worker at a electric vehicle manufacturer. And then uh, On Mars is one where you are trying to kind of populate Mars and get as many of the resources from Mars as possible. Those are very big, complex games, but I'm, man, I'm very pumped to play them. Uh, then a couple smaller ones. We got Patterns. It's a two-player abstract game. You're putting these little um, colored discs out on this grid in different patterns in order to score more points than the person you're playing against. Then Nidavellir. It's a mainly an auction game. where You're playing out auction coins in order to uh, win these cards, and the cards will get you points. But you can also play two cards down to your cauldron. And I believe that you get to add their totals together in order to take a new coin from the bank. And so your coins are constantly getting better, too, for the auction. Now we're at Dabawala, where you are stacking these different Dabas in the first phase 
on your little uh, bicycle. And then in the second phase, I think you flip the board over and deliver them all at the different price values of the uh, different colors of Dabba's. We got Roll for the Galaxy, which is the dice version of Race for the Galaxy. Um, I don't know a lot about that one, but it has cool dice and supposed to be really good. Dinosaur World. It's kind of like Jurassic Park, the board game. It is, I think, the third or fourth in this series from Pandasaurus. But it's pretty cool. Your dinosaurs can, like, break out and eat people. And you have to take care of your park and make sure everything is running okay. Uh, Paris, the City of the Lights. I think that's what La Cité de la Lumière means. Not 100% sure. It's a two-player game. You're trying to, uh, kind of an abstract game. You're putting out tiles in order to control more of the street. And then you want to, then you have a second phase where you put out tokens on top of those tiles and you want to get yours next to the lanterns has a bit more to that that was a simplified version but a fall of the mountain king is a bigger meteor game where you're trying to uh i'm trying to remember if it's i think you play as what are you i don't think you're dwarves or maybe you are and you're trying to uh defeat all of these trolls that are like storming into your cave but also do it better than everybody else have a landy from again the good doctor reiner knizia is a uh, kind of an abstract <coughs> excuse me game about getting the most control and points over this kind of hot air balloon track here I've been talking too long. My cough's coming out. Uh, Age of Innovation is a very big game. It's a sequel of source to Terra Mystica. You have your own race and type of people, and you're building out their civilization over the land. Pretty complex, but very, very well loved. Under Falling Skies is a solo game. It's kind of like Space Invaders, the dice game. You roll dice and you have to protect um, the world from these alien ships that are coming down from the top of the board. Supposed to be a great solo game. To Let em is a game from, I think, Board and Dice in their T series. I don't even know very much about this one. Well, I, at least how to play it. I know it's supposed to be a very, very good Euro, um, but haven't even read the rule book here. That's how far behind I am. My Farm Shop is similar to Space Base and games like uh, Dice Forge where you're rolling a couple dice and you're going to activate the sections that correlate with the number rolled. Search for Planet X is a deduction game where you're trying to find this Planet X. Um, yeah, I don't even know exactly how the deduction works in that one, but you're deducing things on your little paper behind your shield there. A Railroad Revolution is kind of a bit meatier of a game than something like Ticket to Ride, but um, kind of similar vibe. You're building your like uh, railroad company from one side of the country to the other. Ganymede is an engine building game. Kind of uh, some people that I've trust online say it, is somewhat similar to Splendor in its ramp or engine building ramp. I like the sci fi art in this one though. Pretty cool. And then last up, a solo game called Reckland Run, which is in Renegade Game Studios. Um, what do they call it? The Solo Hero series. So similar to Proving Grounds and what's that other one called? Warp's Edge. So I wanted to play that one too. Anyways, I meant for that to be a short exercise in me just kind of listing them all, but um, as far as what I'm most looking forward to in board games, I I have too much to play. So I think the two final thoughts I have here, I'm uh, I'm going to try to not order any new games for the foreseeable future, which will be good. I have been trying to only get new ones when I have purged something so that I stay at somewhat of an even kind of dollar amount. Um, but I think it is 
time that I play through the shelf of shame. So anyways, if anyone watching has any comments on how they have conquered their shelf of shame, I would love to hear about that. Thank you.